so um, the gas stopped working and like, it just wasn't working for me like there was still gas there and all that sort of stuff but it, it just wasn't working for the pain um, the pull helped for the first while I was in there um, for the first little while while I was in the pool um, but yeah then that sort of faded off and they were just getting worse so I was in the pool for about maybe around an hour so I mean this really I was like hot like I was like oh my god and I was starting to get loopy like not like crazy but like I felt floppy felt really dizzy the gas made me really dizzy like and it made me feel sick um like quite nauseous um so um that was sort of like a bad combination so i'm in the pool for about an hour i hop out and at that point i'm you know hopping hopping out and stuff and it's at this point that when I'm having a contraction like my knees buckle like I cannot hold myself up that the pain is that bad so like oh my god um so so that's about like two o'clock I think in the afternoon and it's at this point that when I'm having a contraction I start to feel the urge to push like the urge is starting to make itself known so, you know, I told them that I feel <coughs> so I feel the urge to push when I'm getting contraction. So my midwife says, um, you know, look, go ahead if you want to um, push, you can try push, you know, and see if you feel like getting things happening, etc. So, um, yeah, I'm out of the birth pool. I'm leaning up against the bed, I think, because... I can't lie down, it's too painful to lie down, it's too painful to sit, um, I'm leaning against the bed, um, and the contractions are really bad, I still have the gas on hand, and I'm just, I think I just use, I'm using it in vain, like, just because, like, I'm really dizzy and disorientated, I'm completely dehydrated, I'm, I'm taking sips of water, but my throat and everything is so dry that I can't swallow. Oh my, it was it was a mess. It was a total mess. Um, so I do a few sort of sort of every sort of other contraction. I sort of try and push, but nothing's sort of really happening, and I don't feel that anything is happening. And looking back now, I don't think my body was ready. Like my body wasn't ready to get into full action let's push this baby out mode like it was just not ready and so I didn't try and force it um yeah I just didn't try and force it um but the pain was definitely like you know um and at this point too when I was having a contraction and I was pushing like it wasn't sort of I guess relieving the pain um like it did when I was actually pushing um, so, yeah, I just sort of thought, I don't think my body's quite ready yet, so I kind of had to hang out for a little bit there. Um, at about three o'clock, we weren't making sort of any progress or whatnot with the pushing. Um, I tried a few different positions. <coughs> I was back to leaning against the bed, and my midwife said, we need to kick these contractions up here. Um, to you know, get this baby out, and I was dehydrated, so I had an IV, I got an IV, she gave me an IV of fluids, um, because I was just horribly dehydrated, and so, um, I got that, I still actually, I have a permanent scar on my wrist from the, oops, can't see, from the, no, still can't see, oh, whatever, I have actually a permanent scar on, uh, my wrist where the IV went in, um, it was a really thick shunt thing that went in, it was about that long. Went all the way up my arm, about, about that far up my arm, that's where it sat, it was a big huge. Um, and of course because I was so exhausted and everything from being, I still hadn't been able to sleep. Um, so I'd been awake the whole time. So this is 30, 
34, 35 hours into labour and I had not had any sleep. I was exhausted, I was dehydrated. Um, so I needed the fluids to sort of, I guess, give me a pick me up. <coughs> so that was about three, I had three o'clock, I had the IV <coughs> of fluids. Um, yeah, because I was so dehydrated and my contractors needed to be amplified to get pushing, proper pushing started. So it did work. I started to feel a bit better with the IV and like it was, I could feel like, I didn't feel so like, oh my god, I'm going to die. Um, and it, it really kicked up the contractions and with the contractions, um, I was definitely feeling more and more the urge to push and that the urge to push would be successful. So um, at 4 o'clock I began like properly pushing. At first I was on my hands and knees I think and it wasn't really doing anything. I didn't feel like it was helping. It didn't feel like I was making any progress when I was pushing. It was relieving the pain when I was pushing, but I didn't feel like it was doing anything at all. Um, and I don't think that position was really working for me because I was shaking as well. Had the IV in, um, on my hands and knees, I had yeah, everything like, ugh. So, um, I turned around instead and was on my back and um, started yeah, pushing with each contraction and they were really encouraging. <coughs> um, my mum was, had my midwife at one, on one week, my mum on the other and my husband was up um, holding my hand and um, during the pushing it was, it was a relief to push because the pain went away and um, I knew that I was at the end. Um, I just sort of kept going, kept going, um, let's see, I think it was about an hour into it, an hour into pushing maybe. I think about an hour into it. Um, I I don't know whether his head was out or not. It, I don't think it was yet. No, it wasn't. Um, and when I was pushing, I could feel it like it wasn't like um, it was like a it wasn't like a sharp pain. It was more sort of dullish. Um, I could feel his head coming down. And then when I'd stop pushing, I could feel it go back in. And I was like, oh, I don't want it to go back in, you know. Um, so I just sort of kept pushing and pushing like, oh my god, I don't know. I don't know if his head's going to come out or not, you know. Um, and I didn't know it, but at this point, I think it was about quarter past five, Tuesday night or something, my midwife said to my mum, if we don't have, um, if his head isn't sort of, out in the next few pushes, um, we might have, it's probable that we'll have to um, send her to the hospital for a caesarean. I didn't know she said that, I was totally like, out. I wasn't listening to anybody, I didn't know what anybody was saying, I was just, you know, trying to, you know. Um, so, my midwife said, because at this point, he's still posterior, he has not turned anterior. Um, he's sort of made it halfway so his head is facing like side, out to one side. Um, and for a long time apparently all, this is what my mother told me, all they could see was like the top of his head um, which had lots of hair on it but it was muscle, like my midwife said it was muscle, it wasn't bone, it was like flesh that was like getting squashed up sort of thing. Um, <coughs> so yeah, she said to my mum and to my husband, if there's sort of no progress in the next few pushes, we might have to send, it looks like we'll have to you know, send her to the hospital for a caesarean. 
So um, my midwife said to me, um, I'm going to give you an injection to numb you down there. So I'm going to give you an episiotomy because his head was sideways so it was going to be way more horrible for me to push me out. So I was like, oh yeah, do whatever I don't care. So <laughs> she, she gives me the injection and numbs me. And then she has the, 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 um, what's it called? It starts with this, I can't remember what it's called. The knife, the, I know what it's called, I just can't remember. <laughs> Total brain block. She has it in her hand and I said, I've, I've got to push. And so she says, you know, go ahead, push. And I pushed and I tore. Um, <coughs> I could feel myself tear, but I was closing my eyes while I was pushing. <laughs> so I thought she'd actually given me the episiotomy. I didn't know that I'd actually torn on my own. And it must have been at that point that his I got his head out. Um, I didn't know that his head was out. Nobody said, his head's out, his head's out. Um, well, they might have, but I didn't hear them. So I tore myself. Um, it didn't hurt or anything because I'd had the injection. I could feel like the tugging of muscle. It was the weirdest sensation in the world. That like, is the weirdest feeling that you could feel the tugging of your muscle. Like, oh my god. Um, but at that point, his head must have been out. <coughs> but I didn't know. So, um, do keep pushing, you know, when I have a contraction. And then she says, all right, um, I just want you to do little pushes. And I'm like, okay, like, okay. Like, and at this point, this is what I'm thinking at this point. I'm thinking this is his head, finally his head. She said, I just want you to do a little pushes. And these pushes, this was the ring of fire moment for me. Um, you might have heard people talk about the ring of fire, like you feel the ring of fire. This was the ring of fire moment for me. And I thought this was when his head was coming out. It was the ring of fire moment. She said, just do little pushes. And so I did one little push. And I was like, oh my God. Like it was like this sensational burning, sharp, like someone had a freaking lighter or some kind of you know, flame torch and was like burning you down there. It was a burning, real burning feeling. And I was like, oh, like it was like, you know, like you sort of want to push away from your body, like, whoa. Um, and she said, okay, just do another little one. And I was like, oh, and then, um, and that like was it was really like a stinging burning and I was like oh my god that must be like throwing a fire because that's really it feels like throwing a fire um, and I thought that was his head and then all of a sudden she pulled and that hurt <coughs> and she pulled him out and that hurt as well like him just being pulled out like I didn't even have to push but it really hurt I was like ah like I actually screamed at that moment that was the Sort of the only moment during delivery that I screamed. Um, the other time during delivery, I was you know quiet. I was just pushed and was concentrating. But that was that in the ring of fire moment was when I actually screamed. And then he was out. His arms and legs were, and his eyes were open. And she lay him on me, and I was like, oh my god, holy moly! <laughs> and I believe my. Um, precise words were, I can't believe you're real, I can't believe you're real, you're here, you're real. Um, so he was, AJ was born at 5.48pm on Tuesday the 21st of June 2011 and um, it was crazy, that was crazy, I was totally like, oh. and um, so he was perfect. Um, Edgar score at one minute was nine and at five minutes it was nine as well. He was perfect. Um, it was insane. Um, 
he weighed seven pounds three ounces, which in grams was uh, well in kilos was three point two eight kilos. So, and he was fifty four and a half centimeters long. I don't know how long that is in inches, uh, but yeah, it was fifty four and a half centimeters long. So. Um, yeah, that was that was um, my labour and delivery story. <coughs> um, I had I think I had a second degree tear, um, and I remember the wife just stitched me up. Um, to be honest, the recovery from labour and delivery. Um, I think was probably worse in some ways than the actual labour and delivery itself. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, it wasn't nothing I could handle or anything, but it, I have to say, in some ways, the recovery was um, a bit, I guess, more stressful, I guess, than the actual labour and delivery. Um, but, yeah. I mean, yeah, I healed up fine, and AJ was fine, and, you know, the rest of the story, I've done updates on that, but, um, yeah, that was labour and delivery, yeah, and that's all my notes, and, um, he was, he was a perfectly healthy little boy, um, <coughs> and he still is perfectly healthy, um, yeah, that was, um, I didn't have the gas, or I stopped the gas before I started pushing, like, I, st I think I, st I stopped at about 3 o'clock, just after I had the IV, I just gave up on the gas and was like, no, nah, I don't want any more of that, it's not doing anything, um, so, I did, I had gas for a total of maybe two hours out of the 38 hours of labour. So yeah, he was born at 5.48pm and that was pretty much 38 hours after I started labour. Um, and yeah, um, that was pretty much it. Um, I delivered the placenta about five minutes after he was born. <coughs> I delivered the placenta, and um, that is a gross looking thing, like that, that's a weird looking thing, like, she, my midwife held it up and I was like, oh my god, that's just weird, <laughs> um, it's weird to look at that, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, that was that, pretty much, and now it's 11 weeks and 6 days later, and He's growing up so fast, <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I feel so lucky to have him. Um, yeah, but he's just he's, he's he's such a lovely little boy, and um, his yeah, he's just so wonderful and so beautiful. So, um, yeah, that's how my first labour and delivery went with my first child. Um, and yes, I, I'm pretty sure, like, almost 100% sure I'll have more children, but I just don't know. I'm definitely not having any uh, anytime soon, that's for sure. <coughs> um, so, there probably won't be any pregnancy blots for the second baby for a couple of years. Um, I'm looking back now, I'm glad, I'm really glad that I was able to do it as naturally as I did with as little pain relief as I could. Um, I don't know if I would do it without pain relief again, but in saying that, um, 
I mean, I would hope that the next baby I have is not posterior and, you know, not, yeah, not posterior and does the right things that babies are supposed to do to be born. Um, yeah, but, um, yeah, I guess we'll just wait and see. Um, yeah, how everything goes, but, um, I mean, I'm definitely glad that I did it the way I did it, um, yeah, and I mean, I love my son, I think he's, he's, he's amazing, <coughs> um, I was going to say something else, I forgot, I think maybe that's it, so yeah, it's been, like, <laughs> nearly 45 minutes of labour and delivery but um, that is as detailed as I can remember and as detailed as people have told me um, so yeah I'm yeah it's um, and it's easier now to look back on with the feeling of wow you know it's um because it was an amazing it really like looking back now it really was like an amazing uh, an amazing experience um I know for the first sort of six to eight weeks I was just like I'm never doing that again <laughs> like oh god you know but looking back now like it really was an amazing experience and with everything that happened afterwards all the tough times and things and the hard things that you know um I went through it really is it really is worth it because it does get easier and it's just you know it's it's crazy it's a crazy ride um, that's for sure <laughs> no dull moments um, but yeah so I think I'll leave it there that's my labor and delivery story finally done um, I hope you guys enjoy watching. If you have any questions or comments or anything, please leave them below and I will answer them. Um, yeah, especially if you have any questions, like feel free to ask anything. I'll, I've been quite like brutally honest about um, when people, when friends have asked, you know, oh, what's it like, you know, is it really as bad as they say, you know, I do not sugarcoat it. <laughs> um, I do not sugarcoat my experience. Um, so if you want the truth, I'll tell you the truth about it. Um, so um, yeah, please feel free to um, leave comments and questions. And I will talk to you guys for AJ's three month update at the end of this month. Okay, bye.